Okay, so this is chapter four. We are moving on here to section 4.1. This one, I know a lot of you is going to be very disappointed, but we, there will be very, uh, not very little, there will be no graphing in this chapter. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Don't worry, chapter five, we'll get into some graphing again. Have no worries. So what is section 4.1 part one about? Well, we're going to talk about radians in standard position. So first of all, we're going to learn what are degrees and radians. There's a difference. How to convert between these two. Hopefully you'll discover what an angle in standard position is as well and how to draw that. There you go. Degrees and radians, what are the differences? Degrees is probably the one that you know the most. So in one rotation around a circle as such, you've got 365 degrees. So what that means is one degree is one 360th of a rotation. So you add all the rotations up, you get one full rotation. The radians are another form of degrees, except it's a little bit different. Instead of one rotation being 360 degrees, now it's 2 pi. You've probably seen the pi symbol before. I don't know if you know exactly how it's used. Here's one of them. So if we do a entire circle, you're going to get 2 pi. And if I give you a diagram like this, we're looking at a pi slice of this whole circle. When the radius of my circle is equal to the arc length, arc length meaning the distance around the edge of the circle, once those two are equal, that's defined as one radian. So you see here one with the power of a capital R. That is the, it's showing it as radians. Often you'll see that there's just no R because degrees, you always have the degree symbol. So sometimes you'll see the capital R there, sometimes you won't. This is radians and you need to know how to use both of these because you're going to see that sometimes we cannot use degrees and we need to have, we need to use these radians. So how do you convert between them? So if I want to go from degrees to radians, pretty easy, plug in degrees into this expression times by pi over 180. There you go. That's all you have to do. And to get the radians, you just do the reverse of that. You times by 180 over pi. Not too bad, pretty straightforward. This equation, if you want to know where it comes from, you're just saying that 360 degrees equals 2 pi. And then you solve for this. Not too bad. Let's do some examples. So suppose you're given 60 degrees. Let's convert to radians. So you times by pi over 180 and you get pi over 3. Not too bad. Often for these, you will put it as pi over 3 to give an exact answer for that. Do the same here, times by pi over 180, you get 115 pi over 36. Try it again with a negative number. Yes, you can have negative degrees and you get negative radians. So these ones are all in um, exact form. They have pi involved with it. If you want to solve this without the pi in there, you can get a decimal. You don't have to. Often it's more convenient to leave the pi in there, but if you did the other one, it's not going to be incorrect. The reason why it's better to leave the pi in there is if you're doing multiple steps, the 1.05 or the 10.04, those are rounded. So you're going to get a, a value that is not correct. So let's try doing the reverse. So if I want to turn this into degrees, times 180 over pi, look at that, 2 pi is equal to 360, you should have known that before. Try another one, times by 180 over pi, the pi's cancel, you get 420 degrees. How about one that doesn't involve a pi in it? So in rounded number, same thing, I just times by 180 over pi, this time you'll get some, uh, this number's rounded, it's okay to round to the nearest degree, and there you go. So not too bad converting between them. Now let's look at standard position. So here is a big long definition. I'll show a picture to explain this in a sec. 
So angles in standard position are drawn starting from the positive x-axis and you rotate counterclockwise. Hopefully you know what counterclockwise is. Some people call it anti-clockwise. And then negative angles, you rotate clockwise. So if I show you a diagram here, the initial arm is always at the positive x-axis. It rotates around till you get to the terminal arm. And that angle there is in standard position. So notice I started at the positive x-axis, rotated counterclockwise to where my degree is. So this one is in standard position. So let's sketch 60 degrees. So starting at the positive x-axis, you rotate 60 degrees and you get here. Notice um, for something like this, I'm going to mark how approximate it is. So knowing which quadrant it is and how close it is to the 90 degrees or the zero. If this one was closer to the zero than the 90, that would be wrong. I would not mark that as correct. So this one will take a little bit of practice to make sure you're rotating enough. Try another one, 575 degrees. So notice here in this one, I've rotated a full time, 360 degrees, and then another little bit. Notice here, I did 360 degrees, and then I did 575 minus 360, so I need to go an additional 215 degrees. So you can rotate multiple times, that's totally fine. You just need to figure out how much you are going to rotate in addition to that. So let's try a negative one. So negative, you're just going backwards. Notice here with this, I changed the axes to indicate what's the negative. So negative 90s down at the bottom, negative 180, negative 270, and so on. And then you sketch it out like this. Not too bad. How about this one? Let's try sketching this one out. So here, again, I've changed the axes to show you what it's like in pi. So if I'm rotating, I've got 0, pi over 2, then pi, and then 3 pi over 2. So you just need to figure out how many times have you rotated. So 7 pi over 3 is actually greater than 360, and then you rotate a little bit more. Notice here in blue I put decimals. If you want to, decimals to give you some reference points, you can do that, but you don't have to. Another way you could do this is first convert to degrees. If you'd rather work with degrees, when you're drawing the angle, I'm totally okay if you do it in degrees. That's up to you. Just know eventually you'll need to get used to radians. Here we go, another one. So sketch negative 11 pi over 6. Again, doing it in the negative direction this time, so I change the axes, or turn it into degrees and plot the same thing. Notice the degrees look the same, just you have different things on your axes. So that's it. That's the end. That is all for 4.1 part 1. Alright, so I know a bunch of you are thinking, how is Mr. Brandon going to top all of these things that he's been doing in the post-credits, kind of, post-video, whatever nonsense at the end? How is he going to top what he's done so far? He's done some amazing cinematography for a futuristic videos. He's done some fantastic uh, guest appearances. He's made some really cool, uh, what else did he do? shown some hidden talent and just demanded so many likings and so many subscribings. So how can you top all of this off? Well, what I've got for you is something that's a little bit more educational, less silly. Maybe most people don't care about it. Whatever. I'll, I'll do what I want. So after each video, I'm going to give you some random fact for the day. Something that you will hopefully hold within you and will sustain you until the next video of knowing that you have some piece of knowledge that no one else knows. So I'm going to break this up at the end of each video. You're going to get a little snippet as to what each one is. 
So for this lesson, your random fact for the lesson is goldfish have a memory of three seconds. That's right. It's been scientifically proven because you can prove how long someone's memory is that goldfish have three second memories. So I'm sure you can all think of someone who has a, a memory like a goldfish. Those people who they ask you a question, you reply, and then immediately they forget everything that you just told them. Or in my case, when I teach students and they immediately forget everything I said. So this is uh, a common occurrence for that memory of goldfish. Who knew?